Hello viewers and thank you for watching Pillar TV. Again, this is Spotlight where we put your leaders on the spot. My name is Monene Mogo. Today we are privileged to have two aspirants for Kabare Ward MCA. Now on my right, I have Mr. Joseph Gitari. And on my left, we are again very happy to have a uh, former host, Mr. Njoroge Kaburo. We'll start with Mr. Joseph Getari. Please give us a brief introduction of yourself. Yeah, I'm Joseph Getari Nyaga, and um, currently I'm a director at Community Factory, and I come from Kabarewand, Kemunye area. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Njoroge? Oh. My name is Jamlek Njoroge Kaburo, a resident of a small area or a small village called Kemunye, a God-fearing man, who earns uh, or leads an active life, is healthy, is a strong team player, and who is ready to serve the residents of Kabare Ward as a member of County Assembly. Thank you. Now, to start with you, uh, we are, are very familiar with your face because you've been here before. Yeah, yeah. Now, what motivated you to uh, change that career path and uh, get into politics? All right, thank you for that question, Sam. I think. Uh, or throughout my professionalism as a journalist, I know that, and you also know that, uh, respect to citizens' right to information and truthful information and fundamental rights is the core obligation of every other media pr practitioner out there. And so because I've been uh, a staunch defender of human rights, uh, many people have been coming with cases of uh, injustices meted against them, and also raising concerns about uh, things that are not done, that are supposed to be done. And I have only been reporting these cases and, and waiting upon the relevant authorities to act. Some issues have been acted upon, others have not been acted upon, and that's why I now want to come in and be the, on the steering wheel to ensure that these issues have been addressed. I'm sure you'll have a very good show. You'll tell us more about your aspirations. Yes. Now, Mr. Joseph Kitari, uh, would you mind giving us a brief detail about your professional background? Yeah. Um, since uh, I was young, I had that ambition of leadership. And as uh, I grew up, uh, I had some businesses. And when uh, I was in school, I had a lot of friends. So I had that inspiration to read. So when it came, I finished school, I had to a call of vine seats. Okay, maybe for those who don't uh, know, what did you, what have you been doing before joining politics? What has been your, uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, I was a hustler mm. and I used to, to be uh, employed for daily living, to get a daily living. Mm -hmm. And I, it came some times I, I, I started m improving myself and keeping a smaller business. That's where I, when I went to a college, I went and kept a laboratory. I did it for nine years. I came to the uh, Matatu sector or taxi, Kemunye. I did it for several years. And then I did, I indulged myself to politics. But I started with the vying for directorship at Kemunye for two terms. So that is for KTDA, right? KTDA, yeah. Okay, and uh, how do you think uh, that professional background will be helpful for you when uh, running for the MCA seat? In fact, I had the vied for 2013, and out of that, because I'm now at current at the, uh, and director, I have experience of reading people, and I know the problem which is facing a lot of people. So, out of experience, I know I'll have a progress once, once I get this chance of MC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, Mr. Njoroge, yes. uh, you've been a journalist. Sure. How will that be helpful for you? Uh, if, if le let's assume now you've won the elections. How will uh, uh, your professional background be helpful to you? Thank you. I think, uh, just like I said, I've been a great defender of human rights and uh, truly yours, I'll be, I'll still continue doing that job. Uh, you asked me about my professional background and how it will benefit the residents of uh, Kabare. I want to go on record 
to say that I was the first person to come up with uh, the first newspaper after devolution. It was called Kirinyagasta, and to date it has employed over 300 uh, Kenyans because it has now gone overboard. It has covered Mount Kenya region. It is now called Mount Kenya Star. And uh, that is some just part of the work that I've been doing. But how now my professional background will uh, benefit the people of Kabare? I'm going to, I'm a writer as well as a journalist. A journalist is, is, is also a, light, a writer. So I'm going to do proposals to seek funds from outside the country. I'm going to use my IT expertise to ensure that I network across the globe to look for uh, investors. Uh, just to give you an example of uh, Machakos County, they are putting up a 1.8 trillion mega city. It is called Machakos Unicity. That is thanks to uh, the professionalism of one Alfred Mutua, who is the, the, the governor, and he is a journalist like me. So I'm going to ensure that I look for you know, uh, investors to come in Kabare and invest there. And also I'm going to assist uh, the school leavers to have uh, one college which, is, which will offer public uh, internet to ensure that we employ these to do online jobs. So these so are some of some of the part some of the jobs that are focus on so that won't mean uh, you are quitting journalism profession to no no not at all yes. there's no way i'll quit journalis journalism yes in fact you'll be seeing me quite often uh, even at your station probably as a as a as a host you'll, you'll be very much welcomed thank you now mr joseph we've uh, talked about you've told us about you've been a businessman you've been a farmer and uh, previously you've been uh, a director at KTDA. Now, with all that experience, what exactly, how are you planning to use that experience to benefit the people of Kabare Ward? Uh, in fact, the Kabare is very rich when you come to agriculture. And in fact, the potential of Kabare can, in fact, the whole of Kenya, I think Kabare is the major producer of agriculture. And we know, specifically, when you come to tea, we have done a lot to feed even the, the whole of the country, although we have so many factories. Mm -hmm. And we, when you come to angry, angry business, agriculture, we have some areas whereby we need to improve, like assisting farmers to get things so that we can have, because not of all of people can get enough things. To, 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 to plant. So we can have, uh, once I get uh, the, a chance, uh, we shall assist the farmers to get things, subsidized fertilizers, so that we can have enough food. Okay, we'll talk about farming in detail uh, a bit later. Okay. But now we can talk about uh, your uh, candidacy. You uh, didn't, you were not very successful on, during nominations, yeah. but so now you are running as an independent candidate. Yeah. Are there any allegiance to other independent candidates or are you supporting other aspirants from other uh, parties? Uh, the only person who I'm supporting is only me and the president. Okay. Everybody who is aspiring is supposed to, to vie for her, for her or himself. So you, the only person who I can support mm -hmm. is only the president and me. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Njoroge, we, you were uh, affiliated with Mandeleo Chap Chap. Yes, proudly. And uh, we have a uh, governor, uh, aspiring governor, sure. uh, who, who is running with Mandeleo Chap Chap. Are you, are you in support of him or uh, what's your position? Now, uh, number one, uh, Article 38 of the Constitution is clear that every Kenyan is uh, allowed or is eligible if at all they meet the requirements to run or participate either actively or passively in an electoral process. Mm -hmm. So whether they are running on political parties or as independent candidates, they have a right to do that. But if you ask me about my support or my allegiance to the Mindeleo Chap Chap governor, I will not say yes and I will not say no. Because one, because we're in the same party, and because of the benefit of the same party structures. Of course, when we're going to meetings at the party headquarters, we go together, we discuss the same issue. We share the same manifesto because we're in the same party. 
but at this particular time i think residents of kabare and residents of residents of kirinyaga county at large have the right to choose to elect their own governor so at this particular time i cannot tell them who which governor to elect i'm ready to work with any governor that the residents of kabare deem uh, fit to lead the people let's talk about uh, the challenges you're facing and now since you uh, since you started uh, making it known that uh, you're vying for the seat mm -hmm. what are some of the challenges you're facing uh, during your candidacy i think one of uh, or initially when we started uh, one of the major challenges that we faced was selling a different party from the the jubilee you know this is a region where people say that jubilee has taken dominance uh, but thanks to President Uhuru Kenyatta, whom we are supporting for re-election, we have managed to instill the, the name Maendeleo Chap Chap because it is an affiliate party of Jubilee. And uh, so far we have uh, managed to talk to people and they are buying the idea that we are in the same team with Jubilee mm -hmm. and people need to elect individuals, not parties. Because political parties will not, will not bring food to your table, will not bring good roads, will not give you bursary f bursaries and all that. It is the individuals who are going to do that. Uh, let me go to the, the other challenge. You asked me about the challenges. Yes. The other challenge is, of course, uh, going to convince youth that they need to vote for you when you don't have the wherewithal, where you don't have the money. Because uh, for most young people, we are getting into politics and we don't have a lot of money. But it is a bit challenging because there are those who are coming with lots of money, you know, bribing and dishing out cash. But we thank God that uh, this time round, Wanjiko is more wise mm -hmm. and they are ready to eat that money and vote elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so you've mentioned something that uh, might be of an interest here. Yeah. You've talked about uh, central region that uh, it, it's a notion that uh, central religion votes as a block. Yeah. Now we have uh, an aspirant for Kabare Ward who's uh, uh, running mm -hmm. as for with Jubilee. Yes. What are your plans to counter uh, the notion that uh, he'll be voted in as a Jubilee? I, I think I don't have a plan to counter anyone. Mm -hmm. My plan is to win. And that is why I have a very clear manifesto. And that was after going to the residents of Kabare and talking to them, asking them questions as a journalist, mm -hmm. asking them what are their needs, what are their priorities. So it is not about countering anyone here mm. because I'm competing with myself. That It is for that person now to counter me because I have entered into the race. I entered before I was decided before. I was decided that I want to be in Mandela Chap Chap and I knew clearly that Mandeleo Chap Chap is not very popular in Kabare yeah. and in Kirinyaga at, at large. Thank you. Now, uh, Mr. Joseph, we were, uh, you started running with Jubilee, but yeah. uh, didn't make it to Zuru nominations. Yeah. Now we have a different aspirant running with Jubilee. Are you planning, any, uh, do you have any measures uh, to counter the, 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 the notion that uh, the, the people of central region will vote as a block to vote for Jubilee uh, aspirants? I think this one is very different because 2013, people used to do that, to go with the same party. That we called it Suti. Mm -hmm. But that's the time these six elective posts came into place. But now, people have experienced, voters have experienced, and now they are choosing a person they want. So I think now it's a person to sell himself and the resident and the voters to accept all. So I think for now, uh, those who are in Jubilee, uh, regardless of what happened, they know they win, they won the race. Mm -hmm. But the elections are on August. And that now, now we are coming in to tell the voters now to choose the reader, not the party. Now let's talk about uh, manifesto. Uh, um, have you, do you have, uh, would you love to uh, summarize your manifesto for us, which are the main key points that uh, you are planning to work on for Kabare Ward uh, residents? Yeah, Sam, generally I'm a dedicated divisional leader. And 
for one thing, uh, I'm not old and I'm not young. And I know the problems which are facing people of Kabare. And one first thing is the job. So my focus, my first priority is to look on job creation. So it's not generally on youth, but this one, that one is a problem which is facing everybody. And you see, recently we had a case of food shortage in Kenya. So I will do, I work hard in hand to, that, to see that people, we have created a job. Like that case of, of Kebake introduced Boda Boda. I will also have a creative move to create a job to sustain people of Kabari. Okay. Mr. Njoroge, maybe you can give us a brief uh, overview of your manifesto. Then uh, we, when we, we, we'll, the, the key issues that you, we've talked about, we'll talk about them. But Mr. Sam, I've not finished. I have a lot of agendas. We can give him time to continue. Uh, thank yeah. you. I have a lot of agendas. We, 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 so have, mm -hmm, we have a lot of, uh, we still have some time. We'll talk about every okay, key okay. issue that you've pointed out. Okay. Now I just wanted to give Mr. Njoroge uh, one minute. You can sub try to summarize your manifesto, then uh, we can move from there. My manifesto is very expansive, just like I told you. I visited residents of Kabare asking them the needs. And so it is not about, it is not my manifesto. It is a clear, comprehensive, uh, you know, scientific manifesto or strategies that uh, addresses the, the key issues that affect uh, the residents of Kabare. Number one, or priorities that I found is the agriculture. We need to have a food processing factory at Kabare. Uh, I don't need to expound on that, but uh, if this time I can expound. Let's Number two is health. We need to fix the health sector because it is in a total mess. Number three is roads. We need to fix feeder roads. Yes. And, uh, of course, the issue of youth and unemployment. We have a clear plan for Thank that. Thank you, Mr. Njoroge. We'll talk about those issues in details. All uh, right. Right now, we'll go for a short commercial break. And when we return, we'll talk about more issues that are affecting Kabare Ward and that our two aspirants are planning to work on. Hila TV, shaping your destiny. Hila TV. Shaping your destiny. Welcome back. And uh, today we are having a discussion with two aspirants for Kabare Award MCA. Before we went to a break, we were talking to Njoroge Kaburo, who was telling us about his previous uh, professional career. Now we'll go back to him and dig some more details. Mr. Njoroge, before uh, you decided to vie for the seat, yes. you had previously worked for the, uh, the current uh, government, county government. What are the challenges you got there that um, made you not uh, comfortable over there? Uh, well, apparently I wouldn't say I quit my job in the county government because of challenges. It is because I wanted to serve, and the constitution said that you had to quit six months prior to elections because I was a civil servant. Uh, so basically, I wouldn't say there were any challenges that I met in the in the current administration of Governor Ndavi, and I would say I served uh, with uh, you know lots of privilege, and I appreciate the time I worked there. I used to work as a, an information officer and also a cameraman for the governor. We used to work in the department called the Department of Communication and Governor's Press Service. Uh, th that means you worked with uh, uh, the incumbent uh, MCA, that is Mr. Njoy. What, what did you see about uh, uh, his leadership that you thought you could change? I think w when, you, when you ask me about working with Njoy, I would say no, mm -hmm. totally no. We never worked with Njoy. 
I said clearly that I worked in the county, in, in the office of the governor, the governor's press service. But you've asked me what I so enjoy that uh, maybe made me want to oppose him. Number one, Njoi is a total failure and he has totally let the residents of Kabare down. One, when he was elected and we elected him in 2013, we expected him to go and bring Maendeleo to the common Monanchi in Kabare, but we never saw that. Reason being, when he went there, he joined a clique called the G6, which went to oppose the administration of Governor Ndavi. Mm -hmm. That is something that I saw, I think was wrong, totally wrong. Because when you're serving in the government, doesn't really mean that you have to be a psychophant, but you don't bite the hand that feeds you. Okay. So he should have cooperated with the governor, and he should have done that to ensure that he benefits the residents of Kabare. But, but that one he could have raised, he is a journalist, he could have put it in a paper. I, I, I think I need to make this clear that uh, that time I was not a journalist, I was an, a public officer working in the office of the governor, and my job was not to raise issues about what the MCA is doing and what he's not doing. It was my job to ensure that the projects that are being implemented by the county government are put on the limelight, the media limelight, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. So my work was to go take those photos, write stories about the projects, and send to media houses. It was not to, you know, tame MCAs. Yes. Now, Mr. Joseph, maybe since you to you mentioned somewhere that uh, you you've been a hustler before, yeah. uh, maybe you can tell us exactly. Uh, does that mean that uh, you're here to look for money or is it about the money or what exactly is it about? Uh, mine is a call mm -hmm. and I know the problem which is facing people. So when you know you have a problem, you have picked. And if you are picked, you know that you have a pain. Mm -hmm. So I know the problem. Kabare, from Kutus to the forest, I know people are starving. No food, no job, no health, no security. So I know there are people who need to work, but they have, they have nothing. On, on, think, that, uh, on that point, uh, just a minute. On that point, maybe we should... I wanted to intervene. Okay, let me... And ask, probably throw in a question to Mr. Gitari, because he is holding an elective position right mm. now. Because yeah. at KTD he has been elected by farmers. Yeah. Probably what will he bring different to? Because we, we, I think in Kabare we are tired of this empty, uh, in fact, em not empty to rhetoric. Uh, tell us what you have. after. Maybe me, I, I, I'm saying there is no job. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe the main question, the main question to him, what exactly did you want? I want to know if, because he is serving mm -hmm. in an elective post, what will he do differently from what he's doing now? Yes. Uh, when you come to the sector of tea, there is no politics there. Now that is now the business of tea. And the business of tea is a farmer to get his due. When a farmer gets his due, we have nothing to do with anything to do with the tea. There, the, our main business there is tea and the farmer to get his money in the right way after producing tea. Maybe to, to get uh, to, the, to the actual point, maybe, uh, we should start by knowing what exactly are, what is exactly required from an MCA. What, what's the job of the MCA? Uh, the job of MCA, in fact, people don't know. And we need to tell people and educate even the voters. They are the role of MCA. The first thing is to registrate, to make rules to the assembly. And an MCA needs to pay attention to the session of the assembly. Another thing, you are there to represent your people. So if you cannot represent your people, and you cannot get their wishes and their the proposals, you take them to their to the assembly. You are not you are doing nothing. So you need to represent them. You need to go there and make their rules, which you you go and and manage the county government. And you need to overview. So you are you are the oversight. You are the oversight of the committee. Any law, any the executive committee, you are there to provide and see everything is good. Okay, Mr. Njoro, okay, Mr. Joseph has talked about uh, uh, oversight, yeah. legislation, and representation. Sure. 
what's your view what uh, is that true or what's your point basically without adding or removing anything those are the major or the basic roles of an mca but uh, again i want to reiterate on the representation role because again constitution guarantees the residents that we need to have something called public participation so when we when we talk about representation sam i'm not going to represent people whom I'm not in close contact with. So it is crucial that that MCA talks to the people directly, ask them, what do you need? Then I go represent that. So basically those are the roles of the MCA, but what we see uh, as a missing link is that lack of participation. That where I come to you, do public participation, ask you what is that requirement that you have, then I take it and rep that is what representation is all about. Okay, now let's get into uh, the issues that affect the Kabare ward uh, residents. Uh, you, you mentioned that you've been in the farming uh, industry for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, Kabare ward is, consists of uh, farmers. What are your plans to add value to their uh, proceeds? Uh, in fact, the first place we are on the step of adding value to the tea. But when you come to other agribusiness, and that one is one of the, my fact, my agenda. We need, Kabare is very, very rich as I said. And we need to take part with the Ministry of Agriculture. You cannot do it alone. If you are an MC and say direct you do, you are cheating. So you need to incorporate and get together with the Minister of Agriculture mm -hmm. and know what process you can do. And if it's something like the horticulture, we have a lot we can do with them. When you come to the dairy, cows, we have so many things we can do and employ people. We can do yogurt as it is done. At Kambare, we have nothing like that. We have people are rearing goats. How exactly? Cows. How exactly do you or would you uh, say that you'll achieve that? Making yogurt, maybe production. What are, what exactly will you put in place to achieve that? In the first place, it's to know one thing to get the the so-called the implementation of funds we know we are going to set up a factory that factory now in the first place will earn the value to so many things not only for the for the milk we have the agriculture we have soya beans we have so many things so according to the areas because at kabare even the uh, the lower zone is not the same as the upper zone mm -hmm. upper zone we, are, we have cows the the down do you have uh -huh. Probably talk about the same. He's talking about agriculture and doing this, adding value, doing that. We cannot do that again without a proper legal framework. We need laws to govern all this. We cannot say that I'm going to put up a processing factory uh, two days after I've been elected. We need a proper legal framework. Mm -hmm. I think what he needs to be telling us is, but I will do it because he did not do it. I want to point out that it is very crucial to have bills in parliament that support such projects. Mm -hmm. So number one, uh, you, uh, let me finish. Let me you had your time. Let, let me, let, I think you had your time. Okay, I think you had your time. Finish, then we'll and let, I'm we'll bringing in uh, the issue of the, the, you know, the legality of law because you cannot put up a factory because you have 20 million. You say that this is money that I'm going to. You need to follow the legal process the due process of law there, there's something so, you mentioned maybe let's go straight to that so that which we, one? Uh, he was talking i was i entered to no, know he talked about yogurt pro production uh, from the dairy cow so that it can benefit the kabare ward residents uh, is that is that that's a, realistic, a good cause that's is a, that a realistic that's, that's a good cause and it is realistic but taking you back mm -hmm. i'm saying that we need to have a legal framework we need mm -hmm. to have a law to establish because in my manifesto also I have uh, that that have, is the I work have, of Kabare, not the legal framework of, of of Kirenyaga. I'm talking we are about not talking Kabare. Ab, I'm not talking so about I'm going back the to the people. No, no, okay. we, I think we, we need to be clear. Aspirants, I, aspirants, aspirants, I think aspirants. we need to be clear. We need to aspirants. be clear because we just mentioned about the roles of the MC and seems not to be to understand them. Because mm -hmm. when I talk about legal framework, I'm not talking about the county government. I'm talking about his role as the MCA, unless he doesn't want to become one. He needs to go to the parliament, draft bills. Mm -hmm. The bills go through the, pro the, the, the normal process in the, in the county assembly yes. so that these laws eventually become law supporting such an establishment of a processing factory. Mm -hmm. 
I have the same in my manifesto that I need to establish a, pr a food processing factory which adds value. But that cannot happen before we again go back to parliament, to the same county assembly, draft bills and laws that support that. And you can't be That's only you're what not I, an MCA. The, then you can't. So you have to be elected. If you are elected, you do it. Now to the assembly. You go back to Wanjiko. But you, you, you only said it is okay. not your work to do that. It is the work of the the county government. You know you are mixing up issues. Okay, yeah. let's let, we let, need to, to, to let's be focus clear on one on thing at a time. To go back to the let's focus on one thing at a time. We were talking about we were talking about uh, benefiting uh, and adding value to proceeds for the farmers of Kabare Ward. Mm. Now, uh, you talked about product food production. That is uh, the yogurt factory that you talked about. Mm. What other sectors would you improve on uh, that are under farming? Uh, one thing there is. The, there is banana issues. We need to add value on bananas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to add value on these mm, soya beans. Uh, maybe you would mention uh, uh, like bananas. How how would you add value to the banana growers? Uh, that one now we we'll go hard in hand. Mm -hmm. we, sh we cannot do it alone as uh, an MC. So you have to incorporate, as I said, with the Minister of Agriculture. So if you are an MCA you, and you say you won't do it directly, you are cheating. Okay, give us a f uh, in, a, in a few seconds, tell us what exactly would, what are the main issues that we would work on at, uh, at your level as MCA? Number one, the greatest threat to this country, mm. across the country, not, not, and Kabare World is not an exception. It is not ISIS. The greatest threat is not ISIS, is not Al-Shabaab. And I want to tell you this straight to your face. It is those idle, disillusioned youth who have cleared school, who are graduates, seated down there watching as politicians pass them. Wameka huko base mitani, looking at politicians wanawapita na magari makubwa makubwa, fuel guzzlers. Okay. So my, my, my major priority will be to ensure that youth have got engagements. And it is clear in our constitution that we need to empower the youth because uh, Article 56 is clear that uh, it has set aside some money for, for the youth, 30% the affirmative action to ensure that we benefit and okay, we I'll cut you short, uh, in governance. Mr. Njoroge, yes. uh, I'm sure we have, we've had a productive conversation. I'm sure we'll get back on this another time. But yeah. for now, uh, I'll give you each about 30 seconds to talk to your uh, potential voters. Your camera will be that one and you'll have 30 seconds to uh, talk to them. Uh, thank you viewers. Uh, mimi ningataka kuamwambia mcha I'm here now to ask you to vote for me because I'm the first and the most person who started uh, vying for the as the constitution change from six post and was there in 2013 and I'm requesting you I'm the good chance I'm a good chance if you vote me at 2017 and I work for you meaningly. Thank you, Mr. Coach, Joseph and promise. Mr. Njoroge, 30 seconds. All right. Thank you, residents of Kabare. I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm telling you that Kabare Ward is in a total mess. Kabare Ward is tired of the status quo rubbish and mediocrity leadership. We need a leader of integrity. We need a leader who will deliver. We need a leader who has fresh blood. We need a leader who is visionary. I am vision oriented because I will be the president of Kenya in 30 years. 2047 I will be the president. Thank a you. journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Give me the job of the MCA and you see prosperity, service and security. Thank, thank you, you Mr. Njoroge. Uh, thank you for coming for the thank show. Thank you very much Sam. Thank you Mr. Joseph. Thank you viewers for keeping Spotlight. It has been a very productive show today. And I hope uh, by now you have uh, every detail from both of our uh, as guests today. My name is Monene Mbogo, and until next time, keep it Pillar TV.